The PGA Championship starts today, and we're getting the tour from Curtis Strange. Plus, Netflix got its Christmas wish, and two MLB teams could hit the market at some point. It's Thursday, May 16th. I'm Owen Poindexter, and this is Front Office Sports Today. The Washington Nationals are not officially for sale, but Ted Leonsis is still planning to make an offer to buy them. It wasn't so long ago that it seemed like Leonsis was on track to add the Nats to his collection of DC teams, which already includes the Wizards, Capitals, and Mystics. In February, however, the Lerner family announced that the Nationals were no longer for sale. That, however, may have been more of a stalling tactic than a long-term decision. The Baltimore Orioles were sold to David Rubenstein shortly before the MLB season for $1.73 billion. Some people, myself included, thought that number was a little low, but the Orioles and Nats are in a long-term battle over their shared regional sports network, Masson, and that may have depressed the price. Rubenstein, unlike his predecessors, the Angelos family, seems eager to resolve that dispute, and that could help create a more robust market for the Nationals, which could lead to a sale. On that front, Leonsis makes a lot of sense as a buyer because he would like to add the Nationals to his own RSN, Monumental Sports Network, to provide summer programming during the NBA and NHL off-seasons. And while we're here, another NL East team could hit the market. The Atlanta Braves are owned by Liberty Media, and Liberty's president and CEO, Greg Maffei, was very noncommittal when asked at a conference about whether they would keep the team. Quote, we're always trying to be good stewards of shareholder value, and we'll see what gets presented or not. That sounds like Atlanta is for sale if someone can find the right price. FIFA is exploring the idea of loosening its rules to allow European leagues to play competitive games overseas. It's quite common for clubs to play friendly matches in the U.S. and other countries, but under current regulations, the Premier League, La Liga, Serie A, and the other European leagues can only play games that count toward the standings in their own country. The shift resulted from a lawsuit by Relevant Sports Group, a consulting firm owned by Miami Dolphins owner Stephen Ross. Relevant first sued the U.S. Soccer Federation, saying it was blocking foreign leagues from playing in the U.S. before turning its attention to FIFA and filing an antitrust lawsuit. That suit was settled last month, and as a result, FIFA is forming a committee to look into various issues around overseas play. Relevant works with La Liga to grow its U.S. market, and that league is hoping to bring matches to the U.S. as soon as next year. And those aren't the only changes FIFA is making these days. Soccer's global governing body is meeting this week in Bangkok, And according to Tariq Panja of the New York Times, FIFA plans to roll back many of the governance changes they made after a massive corruption scandal pushed out its former president, Seth Blatter, in 2015. Among those are changes to term limits that could allow current president, Gianni Infantino, to stay in his position for a total of 15 years through 2031. And Netflix is getting an early Christmas present if you can call something that costs around $150 million a present. The biggest streaming network is finally making a definitive move into live sports after securing the NFL's two Christmas games for a reported $75 million each. Those games will feature champion Kansas City Chiefs against the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Houston Texans against the Baltimore Ravens. Netflix co-CEO Ted Sarandos has said previously that the streamer isn't anti-sports, it's pro-profit. Apparently, the NFL is big enough to provide an acceptable return on spending nine figures for one day of NFL action. Up next, PGA Tour players and live golfers will be reunited at the PGA Championship, which starts today. However, that meeting is juxtaposed with the ongoing uncertainty around negotiations between the Tour and Saudi Arabia over whether a deal will actually happen and what it will look like if it does. My colleague David Rumsey spoke to ESPN analyst Curtis Strange about all of that and Scotty Scheffler's dominance. And that conversation is coming up next. All right. We are happy to be joined by ESPN golf analyst Curtis Strange. He's a two-time U.S. Open champion and winner of 17 PGA Tour events overall. Curtis, thanks for chatting. How are you doing? I'm good, thanks. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. Excited to uh, talk about the PGA Championship, which is headed to Valhalla Golf Club in Louisville, Kentucky. And Curtis, you have some history there. Um, If I've done my homework correctly, you finished. 26th at the first PGA Championship Valhalla hosted in 1996. And then the 2000 PGA Championship there was the final major you made the cut at in your career. So some decent memories there. Yeah. You know, it was, uh, it was, it was a hard golf course in the day and I suspect it'll continue to be a difficult course next week. But, uh, you know, we didn't know where we were going in in 96. It was a new, (laughs) new venue for us. Uh, we hadn't been to Louisville and, and really ever. And, uh, you know, it turned out to be a good golf course. Jack Nicklaus had a, 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 a nice design there with some tough greens. And, and of course, they got some history now, three PGAs and a Ryder Cup and now another one. So uh, I think the players really enjoy it. And we've had 
if that, those remember back in 2000, maybe the greatest finish in the history of sport, <laughs> in golf anyway, with Bob May and Tiger. So we all look forward to going back. Yeah, that one uh, is one for the highlight reels, yeah. absolutely. And uh, nowadays ESPN has a ton of coverage of the PGA, which we'll get into among other things. But first, we are recording this before we know the results of the Wells Fargo Championship yeah. being played ahead of the PGA. However, I'm not sure if it really matters who wins because Scotty Scheffler didn't tee it up in Charlotte and is still going to be the overwhelming favorite at the PGA, assuming yeah. he plays and everything. Uh, Curtis, is he your clear cut winner pick? Well, you know, I always like when you start picking players, it's like throwing darts blindfolded. Um, it's, it's yes. I mean, if you don't pick Scotty <laughs> as a clear cut favorite, you're, 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 you're I don't know what you're thinking, but uh, I, I I have a, a few minor questions. As a TV guy, I like to look at everything, and he would not have played in three weeks, although he was in the middle of a stretch of golf that was uh, second only in recent memory to Tiger Woods, some of his golf in his career, and in some respects even better statistically. Uh, winner of four out of five tournaments, all of them big events, big fields, uh, winning by margins. And, but he's had three weeks off. And as of right now, the baby has not arrived yet. So I don't know what happens next week if she still hasn't uh, delivered. So uh, uh, we'll just have to wait and see. And I'm sure that's going to be a pending situation all week. But, uh, yeah, he's playing terrific. Uh, he, He's, he's something special to watch. I've never seen anything like it since Tiger, or before, since, or, you know, since Tiger Woods. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I do want to get into some more Scheffler talk uh, in a little bit, but Curtis, you've been at ESPN for a long time, multiple stints. Uh, right now, the network really seems to be in a groove, in my opinion, with its golf coverage between the Masters, PGA Tour Live on ESPN Plus, and, and of course, the PGA Championship, which gets covered wall to wall in the early rounds between streaming the cable channel. Mm -hmm. How fun has it been for you to see the broadcast coverage of this major championship in particular grow? Well, I'm just, I'm just pleased and happy that we still have, you know, this, uh, the PGA, we, what's different in this versus the masters is that we, we control the, the entire show on Thursday and Friday yep. uh, exactly. after our preview shows on Tuesday and Wednesday, but we control the production pro process the announcers, everything uh, from sun up to sundown, uh, Thursday and Friday, then early golf on Saturday and Sunday. So it's good for us to have our people there working with our people because uh, I think we have a not only a, a, a really, really solid, friendly, professional announced team, but I'm biased, of course, but I think our, our production team and the trucks – are as good as I come. And it starts at the top with Mike McQuaid. Uh, he's been my boss for a long time now. And, and you know, when I was at ABC for eight years, I got out of it to go play the Champions Tour, played for two years. And I got a phone call one day. I was playing the U.S. Senior Open. And it was Mike McQuaid. And I never thought I'd get back in TV. Um, and he asked me to work the U.S. Open with Mike Tirico as a host. And he gave me the opportunity back in uh, about 2000. Uh, what's it, uh, 50, 2007, and I've been there ever since. And uh, I owe a great deal to that guy. Uh, he's a friend, he's a, <clears throat> he's a very professional, and he's a leader. And that's why I think we, we do such a good job doing such few events. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. And it, it's interesting, you know, you compare it to uh, Augusta, where you're never going to complain about being able to be at the Masters or broadcast mm -hmm. uh, from mm -hmm. the Masters, of course. But it, is everybody when it's at a PGA championship like this, is everybody just a little bit maybe more relaxed or like, like you said, you have more, more employees, more production capabilities there? Oh, I think it's, you know, you're still doing a job. Uh, I do a different job. I'm actually a whole announcer of the PGA. So it's completely different uh, uh, process for me prior mm -hmm. and during. Uh, but as far as the whole team, it's so different because we don't have our whole team. We have half our team there at the Masters, uh, but we really don't do the show. Scott Van Pelt and I host it. We throw it out to CBS announcers. So we don't control what comes over as far as the golf. 
and, and Thursday through Sunday, any of the golf other than just hosting. So uh, uh, this PGA is all of us. We're, we're back in our groove, hopefully, um, you know, as we were back at the Open Championship and a few other more events than we have now. Right. And I'll say as a golf fan, I, I do really enjoy just that wall to wall coverage that ESPN has. Uh, I think it's elevated the PGA championship in a way. But, you know, another thing is since this championship shifted from August to May back in 2019, outside of that COVID blip, um, it's felt like the tournament has really grown some teeth in a way. Uh, there's been tougher conditions, maybe a more grueling test. Not not quite like a U.S. Open, I would say. I mean, you would definitely know that, but has this become any more U.S. Open-like than it used to be, the PGA Championship? You know, I don't know if I, I, I would agree with that. I think each course we go to has its own personality and has its own uh, 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 rating of difficulty. Uh, it's the same guy setting it up, Kerry Haig, for the PGA of America every year. He does a wonderful job. Some courses, they shoot lower scores than others, and I think I don't know what's going to be shot this next week. I know there's a lot of new back tees. It's going to be a long golf course. But so much depends on the weather. So much depends on where we go. Remember last year we were up in, uh, up north, and we were, gosh, we were hoping it wouldn't have snow on us. But now this is the new contract. This is the new set of courses that are going to be more south. And so I suspect they'll shoot decent scores. Kerry's always allowed them to play. Um, but, uh, and then the U.S. Open, is, its personality is the toughest test in golf. So uh, uh, I think moving to May from August is an absolute home run for the PGA of America. Uh, we're earlier in the season. Uh, when we were the fourth major of the year in August, uh, the players were a bit tired. Not that it uh, showed up in their, in their, uh, uh, their play, but I think mm -hmm. they were just kind of tired. And I think the fans were a little tired. You know, we're getting into football season really in August. So uh, I think moving here, your fans are just really up north in a lot of places coming out of the season, coming into the season. Uh, that all starts with the Masters. I just think it's more eyes on the PGA now and maybe more awareness of how good this championship really is. Mm -hmm. And at Valhalla specifically, you know, you mentioned the 2000 uh, final with uh, Tiger Woods and Bob mm -hmm. May. Then in 2014, it was Roy McIlroy in the dark with Phil Mickelson and Ricky yeah. Fowler. So a lot of fireworks, theatrics, uh, historically at this course. Do uh, you think it's setting up uh, for something like that again, potentially, given who's on the leaderboard? Well, you never know. But I think the finishing four or five holes lend itself for that. Uh, mm -hmm. There's some birdie holes. There's some tough par fours. Um, I, I, I have this, this vision, this memory of some of these antics that Tiger went through uh, when, he, when he made the big long putt at 16 and he walked to the hole pointing to the ball as it went in. I mean, that's something we've just no, never seen before. Uh, and then the finish with Bob May in regulation and in the playoff was, was something that, uh, well, TV producers dream about. You know, yeah. <laughs> because the world is watching, you want to, we have no, we have no control over the finish, but when it's a great finish, then, you know, you have to be ready as an announcer, as a producer, as everybody in the trucks. A lot of times covering a sport is covering a sport, but you have to be ready and prepared and equipped to, for that moment, for that absolute moment. And they had it two or three times in 2000 at the PGA and they did a heck of a job. And, and of course the players didn't disappoint with the putts they made, the shots they hit, uh, the, just the overall atmosphere of the entire week. Right. And, you know, we mentioned Scotty Scheffler earlier and we're talking mm -hmm. about viewers and exciting golf. Now it, it, golf viewership is in an interesting spot in that, you know, master Sunday was down 20%, right. Mm -hmm. But it, when it was on ESPN earlier in, in first and second round, it was up a little bit. So I know Scheffler has been dominating when he plays recently. Right. But I, I'm kind of of the thought that, Hey, if he wins again at the PGA championship, then he's legitimately going for a calendar grand slam at the U S mm. open. And then potentially more. I, I personally think that would be huge for TV ratings. Well, yeah, it's, it's like the triple crown. Uh, you know, my buddy Trico says, we don't care if he wins the triple crown. We just want the on one horse to, win the first two legs because everybody's yeah. going to be watching the third. So yeah. 
if Scotty wins the next two, then we don't know if he wins a fourth, but we really don't care because it's going to be such a huge audience. I, I can't tell you how impressed and how much I like watching this Scotty Scheffler play golf. Uh, he, he's a likable guy. The camera likes him. He's a big, tall, almost, this is not a negative, but big, long swing, almost a gangly looking swing. And he never miss hits. Uh, it's, he has incredible hand eye coordination and that's really what it comes down to great hands. Uh, I just, I think that if he wins this week or next week, it's going to be, you know, game on. Uh, could he do, could he win the grand slam? Of course he could. Is it probable? Not, but he's the only guy that I looked at that possibly could do this. His game fits every place he plays you know, outside of Tiger Woods. And remember, Tiger Woods held all trophies at one time but never didn't win the actual Grand Slam. But Calendar Grand Slam. Yeah, yeah the calendar. I just think he's, he's terrific. A um, uh, lot of things have to go his way. But uh, when you're winning by large margins and you're winning, it's never easy. But when it, when it looks easy, that means he has something that other players don't have. Right. It, so he has the game and, you know, some of his – you know, his swing and his footwork is not really orthodox, but, you know, I haven't seen him, if we're talking about Tiger, you know, running and pointing at the hole as the uh, the ball goes in from 50 feet. Uh, if, if he was a little bit more theatrical, do you think people might have a different view on him just as a budding superstar? Well, I, I, I you know, nor will you ever see him running toward the hole, pointing toward it, <laughs> uh, or big fist pumps, um, but that's him. And if he tried to do that, it would be uncomfortable for him. You know, I like to explain to people that when you're walking up the last hole, either on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, whatever, and there's great many fans there, they're all standing on their feet clapping. I always thought it was very uncomfortable. I mean, when you think about it, they're clapping for me or for, say, Scotty, and Scotty's the type of guy who think, you know, this is really nice and great, but it's weird. You know, I'm just playing golf. I'm doing what I trained to do since I was a kid uh, and I'm doing it very well now. And I really appreciate these fans, but sit down and let me play that type of thing where Tiger takes it all in different personality, nothing wrong with either one. I think Tiger's personality and his theatrics and his, his, his charisma, his smile uh, uh, is all good. And it's really good for TV. Uh, Scotty on the other hand is, Good to TV as well because he comes off as a, a nice young man, somebody that all the mothers out there <laughs> would love to, to, to make dinner for, that kind of thing. Yeah, <laughs> I, I hear you. Uh, all right, uh, we can't talk about a major championship without getting into the divide that's in professional golf right now still, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Um, now, you're get, now you're going to get me started. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Live golf, PGA Tour players back together for just the second time out of, you know, four times this year, we think. The PGA of America did give out uh, six or seven special exemptions for some live players that mm -hmm. so they could get, you know, top 100 in the world, et cetera. Uh, as a broadcaster, Curtis, does the PGA Tour live storyline still have juice for you is, or is it really just about what's on the course? Oh, it has plenty of juice outside the lines. That's all I, that's all I'm on. I've been on the phone for an hour this morning after, before talking to you about it last yesterday afternoon. Um, it's, um, it's very much a, a, a cluster of things, um, uh, and, and not many of them good. Um, uh, we, the tour have created some of this. Now it all started with the Saudis coming in and Yasser coming in with all this money and buying players for LIV. Okay. But we have, we have done things that, I think that the players are running the show now, uh, and that's not healthy. The inmates are running the asylum. Uh, I wonder where Jay Monahan, our commissioner, is in all of this. Uh, I wonder where the independent directors are in all of this. And honestly, I'm a former player of, of, of almost 50 years on tour, and I have no answers for you. No answers. I, you know as much as I do. Uh, mm -hmm. There's there's things going on in the background that are trying to get some movement, but it seems like there's 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 a lot of the disappointing moves are within our own tour. 
I don't think anybody knows which way's up. And so anyway, be that as it may, come into the PGA next week. It's the second time all year long that we are going to have a, a great field. Uh, the first being the Masters. Um, we do have players not playing the PGA Tour in these elevated events, which is another issue, another conversation altogether. But we do have, you know, Kepka and DJ and Bryson and, you know, and the others, uh, Cam Smith, come into play together because they are top 15 players in the world. Mm -hmm. So the PGA, that's why the four majors are going to take on even a more important role this year and in the future, because this is the only time we get to see all these players together. And I miss watching them play. I miss watching yeah. Cam Smith play. I miss watching uh, Brooks Kepka play uh, because they, they play the game extraordinarily well. And I want to see who really is the best player in the world. You know, right now yeah. it's Scotty Scheffler, but Scotty hasn't played against two or three or four of these other players this year, not other than the Masters. And that's not taking anything away from Scotty, trust me. Sure. Yeah. But the facts are the facts. And so uh, uh, I, I look forward to next week just for that reason. Mm -hmm. and, and Curtis, since you brought up the player leadership and, and all that, I'm sure you've been following the news out of Charlotte with Roy McIlroy not returning to the policy board, but maybe still being involved in some negotiations that, with the fifth. That popped up this morning, you know? Yeah, exactly. It, it's, it, is that just goes back to your point of you don't really know what's going on. You're just not confident with, you know, who's in those negotiate, negotiating rooms. Well, that's changed in the last 24 hours. Who's in the negotiating rooms? Mm -hmm. You know, you know, our, our buddy Webb Simpson was going to get off the board and once McElroy back on, but now the board, the, the, the player directors voted Rory not to be back on. Yeah. Uh, uh, that was a shocker to me two days ago. Uh, Webb is now going to serve through 2025. Uh, there's a lot of moving parts and nothing is being put back together. And we, we, are, we are distributing enormous amounts of money to players. And the tour owes the players nothing. The tour is a, is, a, is, a, is a platform to put some tournaments together to give us access to play the game in which we love. And... Uh, I never went to a tournament in my life and looked at the purse. I went to a tournament that I enjoyed going to, like the courses, like the town, although we didn't see any of the town, and just fit my schedule with wife and family and kids. Um, so now it's, it's all about buying players, tournament purses, mm -hmm. equity stock now in this new company, PIP, which is basically giving players money for their social interaction. It's all a crock as far as I'm concerned, but I'm old school. That's fair enough. But uh, I, if, I, I wish I could speak more intelligently about it, but I can't get answers from anybody either. So uh, uh, anyway, um, hopefully this thing works us out sooner rather than later because we, you know, we talked about the players, but we haven't talked about the fans and how exhausted they are with all of this. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you how many people every day I talk to and they're sick of it. They're sick of it because, you know, the tour was so different than ever, every other sport forever because you, you were paid on how you played. Simple mm -hmm. as that. And when you played well, you could make some outside income. Now it's about the players want to get paid now up front. And that's just, it's a different mentality than I ever dreamed it would happen on tour. Yeah. Uh, well, I think the good thing is, you know, once the action tees off on, on Thursday in Valhalla, then we can kind of just zone in on the on-course yeah. action, hope, hopefully. Um, and I know we could talk no, about this. Uh, we could talk about no, this for that, days. Absolutely. But... And that's what we're, and that's what we do. And that's why we like to go to these big events because there is less talk of all of this. Uh, and, and the event and the golf course are the most important things of the week. And, and that's why we look forward to it. Curtis, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, we'll be looking forward to watching you and everyone else on ESPN uh, during the PGA Championship, and we'll hope it's a good one. You know, it's always going to be a good one. It's, it's, a, it's one of the four big weeks of the year for us in golf, and hope everybody enjoys it. Valhalla's a good golf course, great field. It's going to be a good week. Awesome. Well, thanks again for joining us. Uh, best of luck. Thank you very much for having me. That's it for today. Subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. And if you're watching on YouTube, do us a favor and hit that like button. Leave us a comment. Thanks for listening. We'll see you tomorrow.